Live from San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering DataWorks Summit 2017. Brought to you by Hortonworks. Hey, welcome back to theCUBE, live from the DataWorks Summit, day two. We've been here for a day and a half talking with fantastic leaders and innovators, learning a lot about what's happening in the world of big data, the convergence with the Internet of Things, machine learning, artificial intelligence, it go on and on. I'm Lisa Martin, my co-host is George Gilbert, and we are joined next by a couple of guys. One is a CUBE alumni, uh, Itamar Ankorian, the CMO of Attunity. Welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you very much, good to great, be here. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you here. And Arvind Rod, Rajagopalan, the Director of Technology Services for Verizon. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So we were chatting before we went on and uh, Verizon, you're actually going to be presenting tomorrow at the DataWorks Summit. Tell us about building, uh, the journey that Verizon has been on building a data lake. Well Verizon, as you know, is, you know over the last 20 years has been a, a large corporation, you know, made up of a lot of different acquisitions and mergers. Uh, and you know that's how it was formed in you know uh, in 20 years back. And as we gone through the journey of you know the mergers and acquisitions over the years, you know we had uh, data from different companies come together and, and form a lot of different data silos. So the reason we kind of started you know looking at this is you know our CFO started asking questions around you know being able to answer one Verizon questions. Uh, it, it's as simple as you know having uh, days payable or you know working capital analysis across all the lines of businesses. And since we have a you know three major ERP footprint, it is extremely hard, you know, to you know get that data out. And there was a lot of manual you know data prep activities that was going into you know bringing together those one Verizon views. So that's really what was the catalyst to get the journey started, you know, for us. And it was driven by your CFO, you said. That's right. Ah, oh, very interesting. Okay. So what are what are some of the things that people are going to hear tomorrow from your breakout session? I'm sorry, say that again? Well, sorry, what are the, some of the things that, that the um, people, the attendees from your breakout session are going to learn about the steps in the journey? So, you know, I'm, I'm going to primarily be talking about, um, you know, the challenges, you know, that we ran into and share some around that. Um, and also talk about, you know, some of the factors, um, you know, such as the catalyst and what drove us to, you know, sort of move in that direction. As well as get into some architectural components, you know, from a high level standpoint you know, talk about certain, you know, uh, partners that we have worked with, the choices we made from an architecture perspective and the tools, um, as well as, you know, to kind of close the loop on, you know, user adoption and what users are seeing in terms of business value as we start, you know, centralizing all of the data at Verizon um, from a back office finance and supply chain standpoint. So that's kind of what I'm looking at talking tomorrow. Arvind, it's, it's interesting to hear you talk about sort of collecting data from you know, essentially back office operational systems in a data lake. Were there, um, were there, I assume that this data is sort of more refined, you know, and, and easily structured than the typical stories we hear about data lakes. What, what were there challenges in, in making it available for exploration and visualization? Or was it, or were the, all the early use cases really like just production reporting? So standard reporting across the ERP systems is, you know, is very mature, yeah. and those capabilities are there. But when you look at across ERP systems, and we have, you know, three major ERP systems, you know, for each of the lines of businesses, when you want to look at combining all of the data, it's it's very hard. And to add to that, you know, to your point around self-service discovery and visualization across all three data sets, it, you know, it's even more challenging because it takes a lot of heavy lift you know, to, to normalize all of the data and bring it into one centralized platform. And, you know, we started out the journey, you know, with Oracle, and then we had SAP HANA, um, you know, where we were trying to bring all the data together. But when we were looking at systems, you know, non-SAP ERP systems and bringing that data into uh, SAP kind of footprint, one, the cost was, you know, tremendously high. Also, there was a lot of heavy lift and, and challenges in terms of, you know, manually having to normalize the data and bring it into the same kind of data models. And even after all of that was done, you know, it was not very self-service oriented for our users and finance and supply chain. Let, let me drill into two of those things. So it sounds like the ETL process of converting it into a consumable format was very complex. And then it sounds like also um, the discoverability 
like uh, where a tool perhaps like Elation might help, which is very, very, you know, immature right now, or maybe not immature, it's still young. Um, is, is that what was missing, or why was the ETL process so much more heavyweight than with a traditional data warehouse? The ETL process is, you know, um, there's a lot of heavy lifting there involved because of the proprietary data structures of the ERP systems. Um, especially SAP, you know, is, is, you know, the data structures and how the data is used across clustered and pool tables is, is very proprietary. Um, and on top of that, bringing the data formats and structures from a PeopleSoft ERP system and which are supporting different lines of businesses. So there are a lot of you know, customization that's gone into place. You know, there are specific you know, the things that we use in the ERPs uh, in terms of the modules and how the processes are modeled in each of the lines of businesses. You know, complicates things a lot. And when you try and bring all these three different you know, ERPs and the nuances that they have over the years, try and bring them together, it actually makes it very complex. So, tell us then, help us understand um, how the data lake made that easier? Was it because you didn't have to do all the refinement before it got there? And, and, you know, and tell us how Attunity helped make that, that possible. Oh, absolutely. So I think that's one of the big things, you know, where we picked the Hortonworks as one of our key partners in terms of building out the data lake. Uh, you know, it's schema on read. You're not necessarily worried about doing a whole lot of ETL um, before you bring the data in and it also provides with the tools and, and the technologies from a lot of other partners, we have a lot of maturity now where it provides self-service discovery capabilities for ad hoc analysis and reporting. So this is you know, helpful to the users because now they don't have to wait for prolonged IT development cycles you know, to, to model the data, do the ETL, and build reports for them to consume, you know, um, which sometimes could take you know, weeks and months. Now, in a matter of you know, days, they're able to see the data that they're looking for, and, and you know, they're able to start the analysis. And once they start you know, the analysis and it's, the data is accessible, it's a matter of minutes you know, and, and seconds looking at you know, the different tools, how they want to look at it, how they want to model it. So it's actually you know, been a huge value add you know, from, from the perspective of the users and what they're looking to do. Speaking of value, um, one of the things that was kind of thematic yesterday mm -hmm was, you know, we see enterprises are, are now embracing big data, they're embracing Hadoop, they say, you know, it's got to coexist within our ecosystem and it's got to interoperate. But just putting data in a data lake or Hadoop, that's not the value there. It's, it's, it's being able to uh, analyze that data in motion at rest, structured, unstructured, and start being able to glean or take actionable insights. From your CFO's perspective, where, where are you now on answering some of the questions that he or she had from an insights perspective with the data like that you have in place? Yeah, you know, before I address that, I wanted to kind of quickly touch upon, you know, wrap up George's question, if you don't mind. Um, because one of the key challenges, and you talked about how Trinity helped, you know, I was just, just about to answer the question before we moved on, so I just want to close the Absolutely, loop on that go a little ahead. bit. Um, so in terms of bringing the data in, you know, the data acquisition or ingestion is a key aspect of it. And again, you know, looking at the proprietary data structures in the ERP systems, it's, it's very complex and, and involves a multi-step process to bring the data into a strange environment and be able to put it in the swamp and bring it into the lake. And what Attinity has been able to help us, you know, with is, you know, it, it has the, you know, the intelligence to look at and understand the proprietary data structures of the ERPs and it's able to bring all the data from the ERP source systems directly into Hadoop you know, it, without any stops um, or you know, staging databases along the way. So it's been a huge value add that, from that standpoint. I'll get into more details around that. Yeah, and you know, to answer your question um, around you know, how it's helping you know, from a CFO standpoint and the users in finance, you know, as I said, now all the data is available in one place. Um, so it's very easy uh, for them to consume the data and be able to do ad hoc analysis. So if somebody is looking to, you know, um, like I said you know, earlier, want to look at you know, and calculate days payable, as an example, or they want to look at working capital, we're actually moving data using a Trinity um, CDC replicate product. Uh, we're getting data in near real time into the data lake. So now they're able to turn things around and do that kind of analysis in a matter of hours versus you know, overnight or a matter of days, which was the, you know, the previous environment. 
And, and that was kind of one of the themes this morning is it's really about speed, right? It's how fast can you move? And it sounds like together with Eternity Verizon is really not only making things simpler, as you talked about um, in this kind of um, model that you have with different ERP systems, but you're also really able to get information into the right hands much, much faster. Absolutely. You know, and that's the whole, that's the beauty of the near real time and the CDC architecture. We're able to get, get, get data in, you know, very easily and quickly, and Eternity also provides a lot of visibility as the data is in flight. We're able to see what's happening in the source system, how many records are flowing through, and to a point, my developers are so excited to work with the product because they don't have to worry about you know, the changes happening on the source systems in terms of you know, DDL, and those changes are automatically you know, understood by the product and pushed to the you know, destination on Hadoop. So it's been a game changer because you know, we have not had any downtime because when there are things changing on the source system side, you know, historically we had to take downtime you know, to change those configurations and the scripts and publish it across environments. So that's been huge from that standpoint as well. Absolutely. Itamar, maybe help us understand where, where Tunity can, it, it sounds like there's greatly reduced latency in the pipeline between the operational systems and the analytics system, but it, it also sounds like you still need to essentially reformat the data mm -hmm. so that it's consumable. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like there's an ETL pipeline that's just much, much faster but at the same time, when it's like replicate, it sounds like that goes without transformation. Yeah. So help us, help us sort of, you know, understand that nuance. Yeah, that's a that's a great uh, great question, George. Uh, and indeed, in the past few years, customers have been focused predominantly on getting the data to the lake. I actually think that one of the changes in the theme we're hearing uh, here in the show and in the last few months is how do we move to start using the data to create applications on the data. So we're kind of moving to the, to the next step. In the last few years, we were focused a lot on innovating and creating the solutions that facilitate, accelerate the process of getting data to the lake from a large you know, scope of uh, systems, including complex ones like SAP, and also making the process of doing that easier, providing real-time data that can both fit streaming architectures as well as batch ones. So once you got that covered, to your question is what, what happens next? And, one of the things we found, I think uh, Verizon uh, is also looking at it now and Arvin can comment on it later, what we're seeing is that when you bring data in and you want to adopt a streaming or a continuous incremental type of data ingestion process, you're inherently building an architecture that takes a data, what was originally a database, but you're kind of, in a sense, breaking it apart to partitions as you're loading it over time. So when you land the data, and Arvin was referring to a swamp, or some customers refer to it as a landing zone, you bring the data into your lake environment, but at the first stage, that data is not structured, to your point, George, in a manner that's easily consumable. All right? So the next step is how do we facilitate the next step of the process, which today is still very um, manual uh, driven, requires custom development and dealing with complex structures. So we actually are very excited. We've introduced in the show here, we announced a new product uh, by Attunity, Compose uh, for Hive, which extends our data lake solutions. And what Compose of Hive is exactly designed to do is address part of the uh, uh, problem that you just described, whereas when the data comes in and is uh, partitioned, what Compose for Hive does is it reassembles these partitions and it then creates analytic-ready data sets back in Hive. So it can create operational data stores, it can create historical data stores, so then it, the data becomes formatted in a manner that's more easily accessible for, for users who want to use analytic tools, BI tools, you know, Tableau, Click, uh, any type of uh, uh, tool that can easily access a database. Would there be, as a next step, whether, whether led by you know, Verizon's requirements or Attunity's anticipation of uh, you know, broader customer requirements, something where there's a if not near near real time, but a, a very low latency, you know, landing and transformation, um, so that data that is time sensitive mm -hmm. can join the historical data. A absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, what we've done is focus on real time availability of data. So, when we feed the data into the uh, data lake, we feed it in two, four, two ways. One is directly into Hive, but we also go through a streaming architecture like Kafka, mm -hmm. and the case of Hortonworks can feed also very well into HDF. 
So then the next step of the process is producing those analytic data sets or data stores out of it, which we enable. And what we do is design it together with our partners with our, and, our, and our customers. So again, when we worked on Replicate, then we worked on Compose, we worked very closely with uh, you know, fortune companies trying to deal with these uh, challenges so we can design the product. In the case of Compose for High, for example, we've done a lot of collaboration at a product engineering level with Hortonworks to leverage the latest and greatest in Hive, uh, Hive 2.2, Hive LLAP, to be able to push down transformations so those can be done faster, including in real time, so those data sets can be updated on a frequent uh, basis. Got it. You talked about um, kind of customer requirements, either those specific or not, obviously talking to telecommunications company. Um, are you seeing, uh, Itamar, from, from Itinerity's perspective, uh, more of this need to, uh, all right, the data is in the lake, or first it comes to the swamp, now it's in the lake, to start partitioning it. Are you seeing this need driven in specific industries, or is this really mm -hmm. pretty horizontal? Yeah. yeah, that's a good question. and. Uh, uh, this is definitely a horizontal need. It's part of the, the, the infrastructure need. So uh, uh, you know, Verizon is, is a great customer, and we've been working similarly in, in telecommunications. We've been working with other customers in other industries, from manufacturing to retail to healthcare to automotive uh, and others. And in all of those cases, it's in, on the foundation level, it's very it's a similar architectural challenges. If you need to ingest the data, you want to do it fast, you want to do it incrementally or continuously, even if you're loading directly into uh, Hadoop. Naturally, when you're uh, loading the data through a Kafka or streaming architecture, it's a continuous fashion, and then you partition the data. So the partitioning of the data is kind of inherent to the architecture, and then you need to provide to help deal with the data for the next uh, next step in the process. And we're doing it both with Compose for Hive, but also for customers using streaming architectures like Kafka, we provide the mechanisms from supporting or uh, facilitating things like schema evolution and uh, uh, schema decoding to be able to facilitate the downstream process of processing those partitions of data so you can make the data available. That works both for analytics and streaming analytics, as uh, well as uh, for scenarios like microservices, where the way in which you partition the data or deliver the data allows each microservice to pick up only the data it needs from the relevant partition. Well, guys, this has been a really informative conversation. Congratulations, Itamar, on the new uh, announcement that you guys made today. Um, Arvin, much. great to hear the use case and, and how Verizon really sounds quite pioneering in what you're doing. We wish, wish you continued success there. We look forward to uh, hearing what's next for Verizon. We want to thank you for watching theCUBE. We are again live, day two of the Data Work Summit, hashtag DWS17. For my co-host, George Gilbert, I'm Lisa Martin. Stick around, we'll be right back.